now. Christmas is in three days and I'm chugging away on the new project. Today hopefully will be the first start of the Chevy 250 Willys mashup. Here's a little update. I think the only thing that's changed since you saw it last is exhaust. So I went with two and a half inch stainless with a MagnaFlow muffler all the way. I put in a V-band clamp there and I have a slip clamp here just to help with uh, taking it apart and working on it. Then I have a stainless bellows to give it a little flex and then into the stock manifold. Some of the hangers and mounts will probably change once the body's on, but this way I can run it and it'll be nice and quiet. This is the same MagnaFlow muffler that I use on the rotary Jeep and it's held up really well and it quiets down the rotary so I think it's going to be super quiet and I do think the two and a half inch will have a nice uh, deep tone, should be pretty quiet and mellow with the six cylinder. When I picked this thing up the guy said he pressure washed it and he took the plug wires off or the distributor wires or something so I don't think that it was uh, set up right so I uh, I wanted to make sure that the firing order and everything is correct. So you guys see me doing this quite a bit on my channel, just getting engines running out of the vehicle. Um, I love old points distributors because they're super easy to work on and require very few wires. I don't know anything about the 250s, but they're just like any other points ignition old school engine. So all I did was pull all the, I just took all the spark plug wires off. I pulled out each plug so it would crank over easy. Hooked a oil pressure gauge up to this little port. Cranked it for a while to get oil pressure. And then I just held my finger over the number one spark plug hole and watched the rotor. And whenever it would puff, I would look at where the rotor was pointing. And it was pointing right about here. But this is a four cycle engine, so you'll get two puffs. One will be ignition and one will be exhaust. And so when you feel the puff and come over here, I turned it over by hand. I don't know if you can see it and there's timing marks. There's a little nick on the balancer. When you get a puff and that nick lines up with the zero right here, that means you're top dead center on compression stroke. If you get a puff of air out of number one and those timing marks aren't lined up, that means you need to rotate it again because you're on the exhaust stroke. And then GM has been kind enough to put the firing order on here. If you don't know, most six cylinders are all the same, but um, it's right on the intake manifold. And most engines turn clockwise when you're looking at the front of the engine and clockwise when you're looking at the distributor. So it's pointing here, we knew that was one, so then it's one, five, three, six, two, four. So then you just go off that. Once you know number one, you're good to go. And I'm glad I checked it because somebody did write number one here and that's not right. That's number one for me. It all depends on how your distributor is installed, at least on the Jeeps. You can install them in more than one position and that would change where your number one is pointed. So it's really simple, and if you get it wrong, you're not going to hurt anything. It's just going to run terribly or not run at all. Okay, so we have the firing order correct. The points looked good. There's a condenser inside there. I also noticed there's a condenser here, um, unless this is a resistor, but it sure does look like a condenser. But I'm going to leave it there because it was already on there. Um, so then you should have a wire going from your distributor to the negative side of your coil. So that's um, that wire that comes out of the distributor. If it's an old school one like this, it'll just have one wire. Then you have a positive side of your coil and that's gonna come down here. When That's like your key on and off. So right now I have an alligator clip. So it's like turn the key on for run, clip that to that. Then over at the starter, you have a power wire going to the big stud. And then there's a little terminal here that says S, and that's uh, your start wire. So that's like when you turn the key to crank the engine over. And then I have a nice little ground. I just went to a bell housing bolt there. On the fuel side, I also love these simple old vehicles. There's no return line or anything 
It's just a suction and a discharge. So this is the line that goes up around here. And I like that it still has the hard steel line that goes into the carburetor. And then this little guy into a fuel can with a filter on it. You don't have to do that, but I already have that set up from other projects. And if you're starting up an engine like this, I would take a little can with clean fuel, pour a little bit in there. That'll get it to crank over faster and pull fuel up there a lot faster than it would if you're just cranking with the battery. Then depending on what type of carburetor you have, um, close your choke to a degree. It's really cold out here, so close it a little bit more. And make sure your throttle is free. Um, if there's no return spring on it, make sure it's not wide open so that when you start it, um, you don't want it to kind of run off on you and blow up before you even get started. All right, I already did have it running for a second. I wasn't filming. It started right up the first, I mean, it just cranked a tiny bit. Oil pressure looked good, so I'm gonna start it again. So to do that, uh, make sure your fan belt is disconnected if you don't want the fan to spin. I don't have drive shafts in, but I'm still making sure everything's in neutral. And I'm gonna clip my ignition wire on and see if it'll start again. Sounds pretty good. I've got a bad exhaust leak between the two parts of the intake, but that's okay. And then when you want to shut it off, you just turn your key off right there. You're not going to hurt it running without water for 30 seconds at a time. Um, you don't want to run it consecutively over and over. Um, like right now, I can still put my hand right on the head. Um, you can see it, little steam coming out of there from whatever rate or uh, coolant was still in the head. But I would not ever run it for more than a minute and then let it cool down for quite some time. Compared to the rotary and the diesel and all the other Jeeps, I just can't believe how smooth and quiet this thing is. It's going to be such a nice change out on the trail to just have something that idles at 600 rpm and is super quiet and smooth it's going to be a it's going to be a nice treat it's so cool to have different like i love the diesel but i do get tired of the noise and the rotary is fun to rip but it's also pretty loud and gets hot um so i think this will be a a cool uh change to the stable so i've got a pretty massive exhaust leak right here I would imagine that's pretty common. It's just like the Willys. So I have a full gasket kit coming for this engine. The manifold's cracked here too. I'm guessing that's common, but I didn't. I don't feel anything leaking out of there, so I'm not too worried about it. But we'll take these two halves apart. I'm gonna replace that gasket. I'll probably break off all these bolts and we'll do a bolt extraction video. And then just like the Willys, they share and take an exhaust gasket, but I have a new one coming. It's leaking oil here, um, so I'll make sure that valve cover is not bent. But, but I'm pretty happy. I mean, the carb seems to be okay. It's got oil pressure. It's quiet. Um, the only real bad sounds are just coming from this exhaust leak, and then I've got stuff. There's stuff rattling because it's not all together. But um, man, that exhaust is quiet. I'm gonna let it cool down for a minute, and then I'll set the camera up at the back of the vehicle so you can hear. Uh, that sweet MagnaFlow inline six sound. One little tip I almost forgot is make sure you don't leave power connected to your points. So like when I shut this off, I disconnected it and throw it over here. Same way with your starter. Just keep everything away. Um, but if you leave power to your points uh, for a long time and they're closed, uh, you can really mess them up. So if they're open, it's okay, but you don't know where your engine stops. So always just unclip that, take the power supply away. All right, I'm gonna fire it up one more time and let you hear the exhaust. Hopefully it starts right back up.
I think it sounds pretty cool. Smooth little inline six. It really reminds me of uh, the old 258 AMC engines like that was in my CJ5 years ago. But also my granddad um, had an old 66 F100. I think they had like a 245 or a 225 or something like that. And it sounded a lot like that too. Just real smooth and mellow. So that's it. That's a successful first start video. As with any marketplace engine, you just never know what you're going to get. Um, won't really know until we get water in it and drive it, but I think it's a good start and I'm excited to hear it run. That's kind of a, uh, a fun milestone in any build. So, um, it's cold out. I'm going in. I probably won't see you until after Christmas at this point. So, um, hopefully we'll have some updates for you. Hope you guys have a great Christmas and, uh, hope to see you soon. Catch you later.